JT is back! I'm so glad. I'm so happy. And I get to be the first one to play you. Yes, you get to be my first victim. <clears throat> I didn't mean opponent. Yes. This battle is being waged on the remnants of a hive city recently captured by the Gene Stealer cults. Their victory is short lived, however, as the Drukari have come to claim the spoils of war for themselves. On these streets and subterranean levels, there is but a single expectation for this 40k in 40m absolute carnage. It is I, Space Marine Steve, hosting yet another game in this, the year of Steve. And I am excited that JT, the other voice of 40K in 40 Minutes, is back to play his beloved Drakari versus Nick and his Gene Stealer cults. Welcome to the table, boys. Some of you may remember me, some of you may not. Some of you may have come to the channel in my absence. It is I, JT McDowell, the voice from the Outer Worlds. I've been on sabbatical for the last six months, just trying to source some stuff. Now I'm back and I'm ready to rock and roll and uh, Oh boy, oh boy, what a first game to do that with. Hey guys, Nick here once again to play on Play on Tabletop. I'm excited. I'm bringing my Gene Stealer cults. I haven't brought them in a while. I have got some of my favorite units in the game here to fight my good friend JT. The forces of the Four Armed Emperor are led by a tag team duo of Xenos scum. Two neophyte hybrid squads combine for a total of four, count them, four mining lasers, which could punch a real hole or two in JT's forces. There is one squad of acolytes being held in ambush. Nick is using the specialist attachment, the anointed Throng, to give his abominant and aberrant a little bit of extra spice. The abominant has the blessed sledgehammer relic, and I suspect he thinks everything is blessed sledgehammerable. Transporting these mutants of mass destruction is a Goliath rock grinder. Nick also has Atlan Jackals, Achilles Ridge Runners, and Pure Strain Gene Stealers that can all wreak havoc all around the city fight. I'm so excited for this. And because you can never have too many characters, there is also a Sanctus and a Kelomorph, and I'm sure that they will try to bully JT's homunculuses. I get to fight against the Drukhari. Now the Drukhari have been a little bit of a bane of mine. I have never beat them. In addition, I feel like they're the army I probably least understand. I'm playing against Nick's Gene Stealer Cults today and I brought my Coven of Twelve. Um, Coven of Twelve doesn't get a lot of play uh, competitively because it's not the best. I think they're really cool. Extra AP is kind of neat on your melee combat, but what's really cool is that your units can actually shoot and still do an action. JT's Coven of Twelve Butchers of Flesh are led by three homunculus, and I know he is the most excited to try out the flensing blade that he has given to one of them. He has Corsair Void Reavers in reserve, and then two squads of racks and super racks, the Hemoxite. There are two squads of grotesques, and one includes the infamous Pyramid Head. One squad of Coronos and one big squad of Talos. Oh, they're so Inchy and sharp, I love them. JT's army is definitely a labor of love, and you can see a lot of conversions, all inspired by the lore of the Dark Eldar. Look at this tail made of bodies. It's kind of gross, but I dig it like in a weird way. Coven of 12 is neat because the entire army I'm playing today is Coven. It's, it's all the Gribbly monsters with the exception of one unit. My old school Forge World uh, Corsairs. I love Eldar pirates. The concept of space pirates is just the coolest thing ever to me, and I had to add my space pirates into this just to come back to the channel with them. The deployment on this incredible city fight scenario is Dawn of War. Nick's passion for this game and creating stories has culminated in the creation of some absolutely incredible battlefields, just like this one. These settings are often inspired by the lore of Warhammer 40k, and this is a great time to go into this video's sponsor, Audible. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash play on tabletop or text play on tabletop to 500 500. Then you can listen to audiobooks to inspire your games just like we do. This table may have been inspired by the audiobook Day of Ascension available on Audible now. I've actually been an Audible member for about five years and I've been listening to audiobooks through them for a long time. And it's probably the only way I can actually listen to audiobooks these days because it's my life is too busy. Audible has almost the complete Black Library collection on there and is one of the best ways to catch up with everything happening in the 40K universe. And they've also got some of my favorite fantasy authors on there as well. 
right now I'm actually listening to Betrayer, though you can start right at the beginning with Horus Rising. So much of this black library is actually on Audible that there are countless hours of grimdark just like waiting for your ears. Start listening with a 30 day free Audible trial by visiting audible.com slash play on tabletop and get access to so much Warhammer lore and more. Or you can text play on tabletop to 500 500. We are playing the Tempest of War and the primary mission is claim the battlefield. And this mission, players score five points in the second, third, and fourth battle round for satisfying each of the following conditions. They control one or more objectives. They control two or more objectives. And additionally, players can perform the quote, claim objective, unquote, action, and will score two victory points for each one that they still have claimed. The players also drew the mission rule secret intel, which means that you can only gain Battleforge command points by having your warlord actually on the table. We just finished taking over this planet and suddenly a cult shows up. The concept is is that I want to steal all the cool stuff you had and find survivors and the slave pits of Kimura don't fill themselves. Oh, it's gonna be your choice. Ooh. I'll deploy the first unit. Well, I've got these handy band dandy a blip system. I get to put one of these down on the board to represent a unit, and then later I can when I reveal them, I can make it whatever unit I want. It's so strong. It's so much fun. And the beautiful thing about it is you can't move within nine inches of these. True. So I'm gonna start with one right here. I'm gonna place them back here on my objective. I'm hiding on my home objective and I'm staying the heck out of the terrain so that I can be behind behind. I'm gonna put blip right here. The mighty Talos are gonna go back here because you got mining lasers and stuff. Well, I better put one over here because I've got a whole bunch of home objectives as well. Gonna drop my first squad of grotesques. Pyramid Head on the bridge. Pyramid Head has always been my doom. Really Every time we've played, he's just like slicing and dicing. He's such a fun model. I converted that so many years ago, I just love him. A second squad of grotesque is deployed on the other flank. I'm gonna go right here. I love how you actually haven't deployed anything. Not a thing. I'm gonna get a whole nother deployment phase. That is the homunculus with the flensing blade. Look, another blip. These are my hemocytes. Upgraded racks, the hemocytes, with a better armor save and can ignore the first damage that they take each phase, go behind the corner building there. So I'm gonna put the guy who can bring them back to life right beside him. The Kronos with spirit probes allows units to reroll ones in combat. JT has a really hard hit in close combat list, so I'm excited to see it work. I think JT is hoping to go first to avoid feeling the brunt of those mining lasers. Are you ready to eat lightning and crap thunder? Go first, kill everything. That's the plan. You heard it here. Let's go. First turn. Bring it. Whoa! <gasps> going first. So Nick's going first, and oh boy, I'm just wondering what I'm going to lose. I'm really hoping that my Kronos and Talos don't explode and kill the rest of my models, because that has happened to me before. Right, Tack? Right, Tack? I got first turn. I've got better shooting than him. This is excellent. It's a short board. I've got fast guys. I'm gonna get to them first turn. This is awesome. All right, you're ready for this, JT? I'm ready. Patriarch. Thing one, thing two, thing three, all one big giant unit. Out from the blips come the Gene Stealer cults. We are playing the Tempest of War, which means secondary objective cards. Nick pulls, investigate sites, secure no man's land, and grind them down. Nick immediately spends a command point on new orders to ditch investigate sites. And I got extend battle lines, control objective marker in your own deployment zone, and you also control one or more objective markers in no man's land. For secure no man's land, Nick scores five points for controlling two objective markers in no man's land. Should be easy enough with his fast-moving army, but we'll see. 
Grind them down is scored if Nyx forces have killed more than JTs at the end of JT's turn. I suspect that with some careful movement and some well-placed shots, Nick can actually do this one too, as JT's forces are mostly close combat and mid-range shooting. Nick gets aggressive with the Goliath Rock Grinder. This helps him score his secondaries and gets his Abominant and Aberrants to where he can bring the fight to JT. But this, honestly, this looks dangerous. I think the Patriarch wants to be a bit cagey to start with. He's, he's gonna hide here for now. Nick advances the Gene Stealers into the subterranean level. All right, so first, I'm gonna start my shooting phase off with the Goliath Rock Grinder. He's gonna fire his incinerator into these guys. I'm gonna use two stratagems. First, I'm gonna use overloaded fuel cells, yep. which means that it goes to damage two instead of damage one. In addition, I'm gonna use dig them out, which means that uh, plus one to wound because you count as exposed. All right, 2d6 shots, eight shots. All right, oh yes! Eight wounds, at my, that's only minus one. Off to a really good start with one down and one left only with one wound. Ouch, this is rough. Excellent. So what you're saying is I spent two command points to kill one guy. Yeah, and Sounds do three like wounds to another. You now have a crossfire marker on you. Ooh. Which means you're plus one to hit for anybody else that shoots at you. These guys are going to shoot. Bikers fire into the same grotesque squad and use the stratagem primed explosives so they can huck maximum grenades. I'm gonna shoot the flamer and the shotguns. Okay. Do the shotguns first. Sure. Two six ups. Nope. And then two five ups, just like that. So that guy will die. Heavy flamer. Four shots. Yep, so four. No wounds. Six shots. Hitting on threes. Six ups. Two damage each. Two damage each. Uh, the first two. Dude ignores one, but that's enough to kill him. And then the last one. Guy only takes two wounds. That was decent. That was okay. These guys are tough. They're really tough. Then I better do these guys next. Neo fight hybrids launch mining lasers into the grotesque. Two sixes. Minus three. Nope. D6, which you won. First one does. Five damage. Five ups. Nope. Kills the dude. Second one does. Give me a six. Four. And I ignore one of them. And that leaves the grotesques down to one with one wound. Brutal. The second Neophyte hybrid squad shoots into the grotesques, hoping to clear off that last wound. Yeah. And on threes. One fail. Hits. Doesn't wound. But they fail. Oh, they fail. Snap. So no wounds on you there, sir. <laughs> last things I've got left is the Ridge Runners here and the Sanctus Sniper. I can now shoot my Ridge Runners at your character there. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna split fire to victory. All the heavy subbers are gonna go into this unit. Two of the mining lasers are gonna go in the homunculus. I want one to start softening up this unit here. Heavy subbers first into the grotesque. Oh, there's one six up. Oh, starting off strong. Here you go. You need to save all three of these on a five all up. All five up. Oh, you were so close. So four wounds times five models is 20 wounds with a six up invuln and a five up ignore damage at toughness six. And Nick just deleted them. Oh, crap. Two mining lasers into that thing to make sure it dies. D3 shots with each one. I get one, two, three mining laser shots on fours. Hit you once. I'm gonna use a command point. Into a four. Got it. Two wounds. I hope my homunculus can live. Involve save? No, sir. Damage. D6 for each one. And it does, oh, five ups. Ignore damage on fives. Oh no, the homunculus actually goes down. That hope didn't work out. He just nuked my Scarlet Epicurean. He's minus one all damage. He's got a really cool close combat weapon to kill characters with, and he just nuked it. D3 shots from the last mining laser into the Kronos. Hits on fours, on threes. Uh, damage. D6, two damage. So I'm gonna shoot the Sanctus into those grotesques over there. Sure. Automatically hit, I don't have to roll. It is a one, sir. Nothing happens. Two kills for Nick in this turn, and that is a solid for the potential grind them down secondary. Nick also scores secure no man's land and extend battle lines, bringing him to a score of 10 victory points. Wicked, absolutely wicked start for the call. Let's see how JT responds. Draw your cards, let's see what you got. All right, so I'm gonna tick to eight. 
command points. I drew behind enemy lines. I don't know if that's possible. JT also chooses to use new orders to discard a secondary. He discards behind enemy lines and draws a new one. No retreat, no surrender is always a tough one, especially if you were planning to be mobile and aggressive. No unit from JT's army can move off an objective that they are already on. He will certainly keep blood and guts as he scores five points for killing three things in close combat. That rock grinder placement may now bite Nick in the butt. That has become the bring it down target. So Nick's thrown his rock grinder mid table and I really don't want to charge a 2d6 flamer. So if I can kill this thing in shooting, I'll be really, really happy. Moving my Kena sights up. So we're gonna just do some work on the tank in the middle of the board. I'm gonna be able to shoot all three Talos into his rock grinder, so that's six shots. I should hit him three times. He's into the tank, six shots on fours. I might kill him, but I might not. Wounding you on threes, because I'm a Meltagun. All right, oh, it's minus one damage. So I'm gonna command point reroll that one, and it goes off. Four D6, D6 plus two each for each one that hits you and wounded you. But you minus one from each of these. So I do eight, I do five, I do four, and I do three. Holy crow! I just actually hit four times with my Talos. Command point reroll the wound, put four wounds on the rock grinder, and absolutely murderized. Does he explode? <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> oh, oh, explosion! Explosion! I get D3 mortal wounds on my bikes over here. Two! You killed the bike. See if guys die. I lost two! Oh no! And two dudes died getting out. That's massive. They're like 40, 50 points each. Oh, I couldn't have gone better. Achieved your objective. Five points right off the bat there. All right, all the guys get out of the vehicle. The Abominant, the Magos, and the Aberrants. If I can kill three more Aberrants, then that actually takes away Nick's grind them down. That's really huge. Let's shoot my Kronos next, and I'm going to dump everything into that squad, because they scare the heck out of me. So let's flame him first with 12 shots. Any sixes or two damage? Four, five, six, and seven. So one guy has two wounds remaining. Let's see if I can hit you with the blast. Four, eight, 14 shots. Hitting you on threes, fours again. Minus two. Oh, okay, it goes right through. So you killed another guy. You have killed all but one aberrant. Flamers, liquefier guns are going into the jackal. Gotcha. Minus one hit, but they're a flamer, right? So force. Six ups. One bike, two bikes, and a half a bike. This is a bloody, gory, gooey game. It's time to get my charge on with the Kronos into the bikes. JG tries to charge in the Kronos, but it fails. He uses a command reroll. The Kronos make it in. The homunculus makes it in also. The carnage continues. Hoping that I can kill both the units that I reach and get rid of Nick's grind them down so he doesn't score those five points. So I will actually start my fight phase then with the... The big crazy things. And the carnage continues. Now I'm starting to feel like an announcer at like a monster truck rally. And the carnage continues. Neither. One damage. So kill the bike. A lone bike survives for now, but we have the morale phase coming up. That kind of hurt my voice. The bike tries to hit you back. I don't hit you at all. <laughs> On a four or higher, I would lose. I don't want to take a 50-50 roll risk. Nick chooses to use insane bravery to auto-pass morale for one unit and chooses the bike? Insane bravery. The bike says no. I can take it. Oh, I would have chosen the Aberrant, but okay. And if the unit dies, he doesn't score grind him down. Doesn't run away. No! That's unfortunate for him, but really fortunate for me because it keeps me in this game because he's absolutely hurt the heck out of me on turn one. I didn't get to use a single one of these guys. I didn't get to use a single one of these guys. Nick must now discard, grind them down as he cannot score it. Sorry, Nick. The rock grinder kill not only scores JT five points, but the subsequent death and destruction was seriously something else. 
JT discards no retreat, no surrender, and while he is behind five to 10 right now, he is very much in this fight. My bikes are pretty much dead, and the Goliath Rock Rider is just all the way gone. However, I'm not out yet, because now we go into turn two, and there's a little thing I like to call reinforcements. Nick goes up to only four command points as he's spent so many in the first turn. The cult scores five primary points. Three new cards. Ho, 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 ho. Hold the line. I gotta prevent you from getting within six inches of my deployment zone. Capture enemy outpost, take your home objective, then bring it down. Bring it down, another tough one as JT can elect a model within the unit of Talos to be next target and make it a real pain to get. It's time to fight. Gene Steelers, here come the pants thieves. That's right, folks. I'm here to get my pants back from Nick. I'm gonna have to fall back with this biker. This biker, this brave, brave biker. Nick insane bravery is the biker for 2CP just to back him off this phase. What is he thinking? First the split firing, now this. Nick can be very unpredictable, which makes my job as a commentator extremely challenging. Are you ready for some reserves? No. The Kelomorph pops out of reserves to hunt down JT's warlord. The Acolytes are coming up on JT's home objective to hopefully score a capture enemy outpost and kill those units contesting it with flamers. Nick performs the claim objective action with the Neophyte hybrids on the back objective, but this won't score until the next command phase. All right, let's move on to the psychic phase. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna smite you. You are smitten for one. Five up, ignore. I'm good, baby. Well, your mind bullets bounced off my lack of a mind. Mass Hypnosis. Five, six, seven, it, it succeeds. You have been hypnotized, hypnosis -nized. That's Hypnotic like hypnotizing chicken. chickens. You've been hypnotized. Hypnotized, that means minus one attacks for them. This character right here is gonna do might from beyond. Fail! Damn, got it. Mutagenic deviation. You are a deviator. On a five, it means that any six is auto wound. Good thing it's on a five. Psychic phase done. I did all the things. Let's Let the shoe sting begin. I'm gonna do a sniper shot to start with. Okay. Right into this warlord right here. Any wounds with a mortal wound? Six up to save. Nope. So it's four damage, five ups to ignore them. I ignore one, I take three. I'm down to three wounds remaining on that homunculus. And then the Kelomorph is gonna try to kill you. You've been crossfired by the sniper. So I'm gonna use the worm tooth rounds on him. Hitting on twos, yep. hit them all, which generate additional hits. Because you hit. Wound them all, and you take one, two, three, four mortal Holy wounds. Holy crap. Six saves. Six wounds. I saved none of them. All right, so you take one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 damage. I need to make a whole bunch of fives. So I die. Oh, do I hate the killer morph so much. That single model has given me fits ever since it came out. I shoot you, I shoot you again, you die, you die. It's so crazy. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get up, it's gonna be like whack-a-mole. You get up and then I'm gonna take this blessed sledgehammer and slam you into the ground. So you think. Neophytes, hybrid neophytes. We're gonna shoot into the chrono. Two mining lasers. One wound at minus three, sir. So inbound save, I make it. 10 auto guns into this squad right here. Three. No cover, four ups. Take it. Fail one, I ignore it on a five, I ignore it. That unit now gets a crossfire marker. Oh, great. Which means that they'll be exposed when I shoot them with a Nick is constantly making me expose myself. Mining lasers, all into these big guys here. Oh, come so, on, uh, man. All their stubbers are going into the purple squad. Into purple squad. Hitting on fours. Six ups, five up ignore damage. You kill four dudes. Excellent. I'm gonna do overloaded fuse cells with these industrial mining lasers okay. so that they get plus one damage. Uh, okay. No one's a hit. I take one mortal wound. Who do you got twos? Oh, come on! I'm gonna take a command point to reroll one of those. Okay. Go down to two command points. Oh, one into a one. Each uh, one does D6 plus D6 one damage. D6 plus one, I have seven wounds each monster with a five up ignore, so roll your first one. Get six. Oh, six damage. Five ups. So I take five wounds. One of the monsters is down to two. Four damage, four five up ignores. One Kronos is down. 
And the last one does. Six. Five, six. six five ups to ignore. Two wounds remain there. Acolytes are kind of target the hemocytes, specifically the green squad with all their hand flamers. Four. On fours. So it'll just be a five up. But I have a five up ignore damage. So I ignore the first one I take, and I lose four models. Yes. On a two up, my homunculus comes back. She does. Great. Just How many wounds? Three. Excellent. Just in time for me to get smacked by a big giant blessed hammer. My abominant is going to charge. Snake eyes, please. The blessed sledgehammer morning wake up call incoming. I'm going to charge this patriarch into your grotesques. I am going to overwatch you. JT fires overwatch with that unit and the patriarch is inconvenienced with a wound before sinking the charge. Pure stream genius for try to charge grotesques. That's a six, they're in. Remember, you are hypnoticized. So I have one less attack. Since they have to fight last no matter what, because of the hypnotizations of them, I'm gonna fight over here with the blessed sledgehammer. I cannot make it any harder for you to hit me. I'm just gonna stand here and... He's standing up nice and straight too, just like a nail. Donk! I get to reroll one hit roll. So I'm gonna yeah. do that right now, for free. So I'm gonna use a command point to reroll one of those, down to one. Give me three. Got it. So that's four hits. You're wounding me on not ones. Oh my. I get to reroll one You get to reroll well. one wound. That's four wounds at minus three. So I need to make four six up invuln saves. Three, one. I make oh. none of them. I just want to roll this out. Yeah. Because I got a field of pains, bro. Six. 18 damage. Sledgehammer of Antioch. 19 shrugs. 19 of them. Can JT do this? I know I couldn't. Maybe JT. 19 five ups. <laughs> nope, definitely not. And with the Warlord Arr. down, JT can no longer generate command points. This is not good. All right, the Patriarch goes in, with <laughs> six attacks, hitting on twos, rerolling any misses, hit them all. Patriarch inflicts six wounds on the grotesques, but JT shrugs three. So you've done three wounds to my unit, sir, and you have not killed a model. All right, and then all the Jesus <laughs> pile in. Eight six ups. Gene Stealers have killed one Grotesque and left one with one wound. So then it's my turn to fight back. Two Grotesques go down into the Patriarch and the other two into the Gene Stealers. Flash Gauntlet first. So I wound you once at AP1. Patriarch, save it. And then these are all two damage. So when you on fours. Four up. Ah. Well, I get two free attacks with my Macro Scalpels. They both hit. They're strength five. I wound you on threes. One AP4 and one AP3. Doesn't matter, they're both four ups. Save them both. And then these do mortals on a six to wound. So again on threes, everything hits threes. Oh, that'll play. On fours, oh, you got three through. And a mortal. Now that was not the outcome for this fight that either myself, JT, or Nick were expecting. Those gene sealers didn't do much at all, just nothing. Killed four of them. Yes, they did. The Patriarch and the Gene Sealers just bounced. They killed a single grotesque left a dude on one wound. That's huge. And now he's got to make a morale save for his pure strain Gene Sealers. He runs away. Six. He runs. <laughs> he runs very fast. <laughs> I scored the uh, capture enemy outpost. Nick's aggressive play nets him five points for capture enemy outposts. Gene Steeler shenanigans on full display as Nick is using the right tricks at the right time to get him his points. Nick will be discarding Bring It Down as that is going to be a tough one to score. With the Warlord dying, JT will no longer be gaining Battleforge command points now. JT scores five primary points and then draws secondaries. Still have Blood and Guts, killing stuff in melee. I've picked up Capture Enemy Outpost. Take yours, oh, that could be fun. And then grind them down. Kill stuff on my turn and then you kill less and I get grind. I'm in a really great position here. This should not have gone this well. This is way stronger and way better than I could have ever possibly hoped for. Okay, so I'm gonna move him up. We're going to spend a command point. Cruel Deception allows those to fall back and still charge. A cruel deception indeed. The homunculus is gonna move up to be within three inches of that guy, and then my mass regenesis warlord trait kicks in and heals him to full. This might be our turning point. This could absolutely be huge. If I can get in far enough to his back line and touch up those ridge runners, I could end this game right now. And then I got dudes to come in. Can actually murder you by walking into combat. JT puts Rax right into the Acolytes as they were within six inches of his own table edge. 
Really smart play from JT, shutting down the Overwatch from all those flamers. I misplayed here. If I had deployed farther back from his table edge, he wouldn't have been able to deploy into me. So now I've not been able to Overwatch, and I'm probably going to lose that entire unit. The Rack Sergeant is also doing claim objective on that objective in the center line. She's gonna shoot the Abominant. Abominant! I need a four with my sniper rift. Okay. I hit you. Our oh mortal wound, AP two, flat two. All right, it goes down to one damage, Oof. and then one and a mortal wound, so two damage total. Two damage total. On a five up, I ignore it. Just like you, I ignore one. Hemocytes try to take down the Abominant, but it lives with three wounds remaining. Flamers from the Kronos into him. Kronos are split firing, blasts into the Neophytes, and the Flamers go into the Abominants. I made none. He is done. I'm gonna throw my grenade at your dude. I hit you on a two. Oh, because he fell back. Great. Uh, yeah, so he's open. I hit you on a two. Oh, I failed to hit. I'm gonna command point reroll that. So you're down to two. I'm down to two, but I have to hit you because it gives me a buff. I get plus one to hit in close combat now. Nice. Against that target or against that? Against everybody, the entire army and I do three mortal wounds to you. So you throw a grenade, and now this, these guys over here are better. Yep, Animus Vitae. It releases pain and anguish. These are from the Corsairs. 15 shots, and then the Wraith Cannon. Threes, so wounding you on threes. Or six ups. And then the Wraith Cannon hits with a six. So the Wraith Cannon does a mortal wound in addition to five wounds. Six guys die. One Talos into him, two Talos into him. Hitting you on four. Well, Boom! And then into the Patriarch. I don't wound you. Excellent. I think it's time to declare charges. Here come the Talos into your boss man. Here we go. A mighty four inches. Over here, I'm going to charge the Keller Mark. I'm gonna overwatch you. Come at me, bro. Not a one! So, Hemocytes go seven inches. The Kronos are targeting, charging the Neophytes. I get a six. So my Corsairs are gonna try to get onto your Neophyte hybrid, so I'm gonna try to make a big bomb charge with an eight. That is definitely not gonna do it. Is this worth me trying to take your objective from you? One of my last command points, I only have one left. Big charge. Oh, oh no! I got a whole bunch of stuff in combat and you can't interrupt me. So let's start with the fun stuff, shall we? Kronos! <laughs> Two go through. That's enough. Patriarch goes down, and that means no more command points for Nick. Cool, I'll fight the Kellermorph. I'm gonna eat the Kellermorph's liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. I'll do my sergeant first with the Electro Whip. Hitting you on twos, fours because it's a poison weapon. Uh, I failed them all. Kellermorph, no! Why, buddy? Why? You know what would've been nice? He could shoot pistols in close combat, and then he could've fallen back, and it would've been beautiful, but you killed him. To make us even, I'm spending my last command point. <laughs> I'm rerolling all fail wounds on these racks. Oh, that's rough. Good use of his last command point as the racks wipe out the acolytes. So I'm going to touch the ridge runners. Yeah, you suck. I'm going to touch the ridge runners. Because guess what all their weapons are? A heavy. No, a last. Well, with that charge and that pile in into my ridge runners, this game is all but over. I have no heavy shooting left. I've got a few minor tricks that I maybe can pull off. Kronos only kill a couple neophyte hybrids, but that wasn't their priority. Now, those ridge runners are tied up and cannot shoot their blast mining lasers next turn at all. Great shutdown play by JT, absolutely fantastic. I do have a morale test to make over here with these uh, hybrids, and they are running. Oh my. And to see if they run, and one more runs. It is really just the end of turn two and so much action. Wow, what a reversal of fortune. That first turn looked bleak and this is absolutely flip huge. JT scored blood and guts and we will have to wait and see if he scores grind them down. The score right now is Gene Steeler Cult 20 to Jakari 15. Is anything going to be left alive at the end of this one? On to turn three. Maybe I can draw some lucky secondaries and pull ahead on the score but it's looking very tight here. Gene Steeler Cult score two for claimed objective and five for the mission primary. Nick gets assassination and still has a Sanctus on the table made for moments like these. Storm hostile objective. Take an objective away from you. So no prisoners, I gotta kill a bunch of units. I gotta kill 30 points worth of units. Not happening. And in the command phase, I do have one thing I can do. These banners will bring guys back. So this one will bring D6 guy back. Six guys come back. We'll also get six guys back. 
There's no point in falling back with these Ridge Runners, so they're gonna stay in. My guys are gonna stay in in the hopes that my Ridge Runners can do enough wounds with Stubbers to take two wounds off you. Yeah. If I can do that, then these guys can shoot. So we're gonna the second phase, and he's gonna smite you. You're gonna be schmitten. I'm gonna be schmitten. You're gonna be schmitten. Schmiting me in the face. You're not gonna oh, be schmitten. I'm not schmoted. Not at all. He's gonna pistol you. He misses. Oh my. Sanctus is gonna kill the little dude. What's his goal? That is Iraq Agathus. Sergeant. Dude, you're in the face. Oh, automatically hits, but fails to wound. Oh my gosh. I have no command points to reroll this. Two mining lasers and the rest of the guns in here. Um, because I hit, he does have a crossfire on him. From across, from downtown. <laughs> hits what you is? once, wounds you once. Six up. Nope. Damage? He's X. Two five up ignores. No! Oh, so, so close. close. Into here, rapid firing. Fours. Seven four ups. Oh my, I saved one. I killed six? You killed six, no dudes. No way. Ridge runners, shooting all their stubbers. Stubbers <laughs> in here. <laughs> so seven three ups. Filthy. I fail two exactly, but then I have five up ignore oh. damage. Can you fail both of them, please? I yes! do! Because you know what that means? It means I explode. No, I don't! <laughs> that means that he is dead, which means uh, my neophytes can, can shoot. now shoot something. So these neophytes are gonna split fire because that's the only thing they can do. Shooting into racks, super racks. Okay. Take some mining lasers to the face. I wounded you once. Once, uh, five up in one. I'm good. Ha! Three. Three? No AP. Uh, so three, I'll take it one at a time on the guy that gives me the four up cover. He's good. He, d he does he ignore the damage though. He ignores the damage. And then he saves again. <laughs> Charge phase. Neophyte hybrids head right back into combat. Melee Tau, I mean melee neophytes, yes. Kronos and Ridge Runners don't do anything in close combat. Nothing. Nick grabbed an objective from JT for five points on Storm Hostile objectives. Nick is doing great at scoring where he can and keeping his lead on JT. The score is now 32 for the Cult and still 15 for the Drukhari. So start of my turn. I have no command points to gain. My goodness, this makes this hard. I pull Deploy Teleport Homer. Makes it easy, you don't have anything to think about. And Extend Battle Lines. <laughs> I'm gonna move these guys up to here. And take pot shots at your dude. Stay on my home objective, because it's important. I'm going to advance my grotesques. They're coming for you, bro. 10 inches. I'm gonna do that. Claim the objective. Copy that. So I'm gonna hit your neophyte hybrids with my flamer in combat. Okay, coming off. One guy off. One Talos into this Sanctus, and the other two have to go into those hybrids. Heat lances look to fry Nick's sniper. Uh, so they're going to shoot, they're going to <laughs> miss you completely. But into the Sanctus in the middle of the board. Fives, twos. Zip. Nope. Does. Seven damage. That is one deep fried Sanctus. Mmm, extra crispy. All right, let's have some fun. My charge phase, here we go. Grotesques charge the mangoes. Hemocytes charge the hybrids. Talos charge the other neophyte hybrids. Corsairs are gonna charge, because hopefully I can kill enough to take this objective. Talos are gonna fight your neophyte hybrids first. Talos wipe out the neophyte hybrids, and now JT has the objective for capture enemy outposts. Well, we'll fight the mangoes. He says, peace be unto you. Grotesques kill the Magos. There goes all of Nick's characters, not great. And the last neophyte hybrids go down as well. This is game. Those two gave us an action packed three turns of mayhem and destruction. The final score is Gene Steeler 32 and Drew Kari claiming ultimate victory with 42 points. Holy crap, what a game. <laughs>
JT, thank you for coming back and playing me in what was a very fun and bloody gruesome game. Well done, welcome back, and I can't wait for many more. Hey guys, what I realized, the dice tray is upside down. Oh my, I didn't even think about it. Dun, dun, dun. That's the whole reason why you lost. But I think we all know who the real winners are. Space Marines, why? Because there are far fewer Xenos in the galaxy after this. Thank you to our two incredible players, JT and Nick. And thank you again to our sponsor, Audible. Want more Warhammer to scratch your itch of all things grim dark? Well, new members can try Audible 30 days for free. Visit audible.com slash play on tabletop or text play on tabletop to 500 500. I think after this one, I'm going to go listen to some more audiobooks. Perhaps something from the Damocles Golf Crusade, as you'll actually be seeing that on our channel really, really soon. You're going down, Nick. Or more Horus Heresy, because we recently played that too. If you enjoyed this battle and want to see more like it, please like, comment, and subscribe. We also have a Patreon where you can get early access to 40K and 40M and exclusive content as well. If you like what we do and want to support us, please, please consider joining our Patreon, which also gives you access to our sweet, sweet Discord community as well. And that is it for me, Space Marine Steve here at Play On Tabletop. And until we see you next time, play on. Sometimes it's important that you get clarity in your life. Sometimes it's important that you sort yourself out and sort stuff out. And I had the opportunity to do that. And now I'm back and I'm, I'm happier than ever and I'm, I'm more than willing to stomp anybody else into the ground whenever they want. I haven't got to say this for six months, so now I get to again. Until the next time you see us in a grim dark universe of the far-flung future, play on.